Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel and another organization of the art studio video. Today I'm going to be organizing my filing system for my stash. And when I say stash, I mean my painted papers, my gel prints, my magazine picks, focal images, clip art, ideas, templates, tracers, tissue paper, designer tissue paper that I've done, colored coffee filters. If you've watched my stash builder videos, everything that I've made in there is in that filing system. And I wanted to make it work better. Now, the important thing that I've discovered that about a third of the time while I'm in my studio, I spend it creating. A third of the time I seem to spend it cleaning. And a third of the time I spend it organizing my stash. And that is really important because if you have the stash, you need to know where it is. And you need to remember where it is and what you have so that you can maximize your stash and be able to pull it out and grab it and use it in a project. So even if you're just organizing and that just takes on straightening, you're looking at your stuff, you're seeing what you have, refreshing your memory, and you're more apt to use what you have. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make it easier to access my stash. I had in that filing system, I had my gel prints, different size gel prints. I have magazine picks, and they were in a separate filing system um, in the same filing cabinet, but in different files. I have templates, and it got to be a bit of a hot mess. While everything was together based on the themes that I use, it was a hot mess, and you'll see more of that later on. So I knew I wanted to do that coming into the new year. So I searched Amazon and I came up with, I was looking for a plastic pockets. Now I've bought a whole bunch from the dollar store over time and I'm going to show you so, some of those later. But I wanted one that had a pouch that I could put a label in. So I found these. Now they come in two sizes and depending on you, if you're on .ca or .com with Amazon, you'll find things that are somewhat similar. Some are colored, some are clear. Uh, sometimes you can get both sizes, sometimes you can get separate sizes. So, but I bought the set where you get the A4 size, which is nine and a half by 13, which I want for my stash filing system. And it came with these smaller ones that are nine and three quarters by six and a half. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted these for, but if you've watched one of my recent videos, you'll know that I use those for my stamp storage, which I absolutely love. I've pulled out all my stamps. They're all in here. They're organized somewhat by theme, and I just, as I've been using it, it's so easy. I grab it, pull out what I need, Everything's here. I'm using some stamps that I haven't used for a long time. So I'm loving that system. In fact, I ordered more of these. Now these I've used in this system. So I am going to cut to some showing you exactly what I did, how I took my files and what they look like ahead of time or before and what they look like now. And then I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and show you exactly what the files look like now to give you an idea. Now what I want you to do is you're not going to duplicate exactly what I have in my studio. You're not me. But I'm hoping that it's going to trigger some ideas and you will be able to run with the idea, make it your own, tweak it however, with the space and the storage system that you have. Now a word about the storage systems that I used to have. They still work. When I started I didn't need as much storage and now as I've evolved as an artist and I know what things I'm using and how I like to work, 
the my storage system, my organization system is reflecting that. But I will put up in the top right hand corner, I'm opposite here, top right hand corner in the I cards or at the end, in the end cards, a link to the storage videos and you can see those because maybe that will fit better what you need to do. So in my filing system, over time, I have purchased a lot of plastic envelopes, all at the dollar store, Dollar Tree, over time. And every time you go, they seem to have different ones and the price point change. Sometimes you got one for a buck, sometimes you got three. But I'm just going to compare them to the envelope that I now have. None of these have the uh, pocket where you can put the label in. So none of them have that. The other thing that I notice that I find to be important is the size. The size of this one is nine and a half by 13. So it will hold larger pieces of paper than just regular copy paper, which is all this is going to hold. These ones are, that's just going barely, as you can see. And so when I do a lot of papers or my mixed media, you know, I have some that are, are different sizes. I want whatever to fit in there. So one, I want to get something that's all the same size. So I like the larger size, the nine and a half by 13, instead of the small ones. Now this one is, I did buy some that were bigger as I over time realized that that's what I wanted. Now you can see the, how flimsy this is compared to this. This one, you know, it's not even going to stand up. It looks almost the same. It's the same size, but it's much thinner. And, you know, even with the t how I've used it, it's, it's showing its wear, as I'm sure is that these will. And over time, I'm going to be better off. But the weight of the plastic is higher. The other thing I have, now this one's a larger one again, and it's a little bit more solid. It's not quite as, as this one, and it has these strings. And the strings, you know, inevitably I've lost them because I take them off. They're on my desk. I probably use them on an art journal page. They fall off. They add bulk in the filing cabinet, whereas the snap is less. So I don't, I prefer the snap without and not the strings. The other thing that I do not like this, even if this one was bigger, is this zipper, the ones with the zippers. Inevitably, in my experience, the ones that I bought, dollar store, admittedly, they all break apart. The zipper stops working on this one. The zipper actually fell off. They're a good way to plastic, but one small and the closure doesn't work. Other ones, you know, as you can see, this, the way it's seamed together, it has come apart. And I've had numerous ones, you know, do that. So this one is going to be end up being repurposed. You know, it looks very familiar, very similar to to this. I don't know, like this. I I can't I can't even get it to fall apart when I'm trying. So hopefully it doesn't do that over time. This I'm going to turn into. I'm going to see if I can cut it for stencils. I'm going to repurpose it because it's a nicer it's a nice weight, and it may just work. So. Size, thickness, closure. They all match. I've bought some where 
they don't even close because it's off. I've bought some that are for to put in a binder and the holes don't line up with any binder I've owned. So buyer beware. You know, again, you know what you can afford, you know what you can access, but I'm just presenting you with an alternative that right now I am very happy with. I wanted to show you what I did with each and every file. Now this is my Christmas theme and this is pre any organization. So everything that I had that was Christmas themed or winter theme was shoved into this divider. And in, as you can see, it is a big mess. Now I also had in a separate folder, magazine picks that were Christmas themed. So that was in a separate place. Sentiments or stencils might have been in a se separate place as well. So I took from several different sources and put it all in the one package. Now, what you see me doing here, and I did with every single file, is I sorted like with like. So I've got things I've cut with my silhouettes, stencils and, and masks. I have embellishments. I have scrapbook paper. I have die cuts as well. I've got letters, masks, and stencils. And I'm just sorting like with like, just organizing what I have. Now, as you can imagine, every time I went to this pouch, I pretty much had to do this. And so I wanted a better system. I didn't want to have to organize and reorganize every time I grabbed a folder. So without a word of a lie, every single piece of paper in my filing cabinet, I touched. Now I admit, I didn't get rid of a whole lot, but it is all organized and it's, I believe, more easily accessible. Now I keep everything. If I've printed out something, clip art, if I've, made a template or a tracer for something. I keep it because quite honestly, with the themes that I'm talking about in my filing system, I tend to come back to, I tend to revisit over time. Now, some of these smaller sets, I have small packaging from stamps, from stencils, from mini canvases, and I keep those and they're perfect for organizing these little bits of die cuts and templates and what have you. And so that's what I'm doing now. So while they're still all in the same folder, they're not going to be the hot mess that you saw at the very beginning. And I'm just putting them in there and already I hope you can see how much of an improvement this is. And if it's not a hot mess, I'm going to easy, more easily find it. I'm go more, going to be more likely to use it as well. So I've got magazine pictures there, a few of them. And again, I don't use them a whole lot, but I'm not throwing them out. Because as an art journalist, as a mixed media artist, we use a lot of this stuff. So these are page protectors, and these are heavy-duty ones that I believe I bought at Costco. And I'm cutting off the part for the ring binder because I don't want them in the folder. I want it to fit better. Now, at one time, I did have them in the plastic folders, and then I had it in a binder, but I don't find that easily to, easy to access. You're filling a whole binder, and it's everything, not just the one theme. So these are some embellishments and die cuts that I won. And now they're all going to be in one place. They're all in this plastic divider. I put a sheet of paper in between, so really I can store two things, one on each side. And you can easily see what's in that folder. So instead of dumping a whole pile, there's the picture of the 
page protectors that I've used. But instead of grabbing out the whole folder and having the pile, I can pull it out and I have all these sheets and page protectors and things in the stencil packaging that's just easier to access and to put away after. The things that when they're in the page protector, instead of just all in a big heap like you saw at the beginning, it's also going to protect them. Things are going to get ripped or torn or bent a whole lot less than what you saw at the beginning. I also take ideas for composition or for a page and I may print that out in black and white and I put ideas in these folders. The idea being that this folder is going to be the source of all the things that I could use on the page, from inspiration right down to ready-made embellishments. So there's my A4 fold plastic folder, and now I simply have to put the page protectors with all their contents in there, the ones that are in the uh, packaging, and it all fits and I love it. I've used this a little bit over the last little while since I developed this and it just makes it so, so, so much easier. I hope you find this helpful. So there is where I work and film and just if you just turn this way there is my stash filing system. Now I lucked out and I was able to get this for a very inexpensive price. They were selling it at kind of a garage sale at a high school where I used to work and I was able to get it on the cheap. So it's very close and I can reach everything in here by just turning my chair and that's important because I want quick easy access to my stash. Now I'm hoping that I don't shuffle too much here, don't give you problems. So on the top we have all those lovely plastic folders in here and I will show you the themes later but everything is organized in here so everything about hearts stencils masks die cuts templates and stickers that's all in here it's all in one place not in the three or four where I used to have it. So these are all those kind of things. The templates, the tracers, the stickers, embellishments, magazine picks, and they're all together in that folder. And I'm going to show you a close-up of how I've organized inside the folders as well. So we have parts, stencils, masks, die cuts, templates, stickers, die cut textures, things I've cut with my silhouette, but I use this to collage on and waves template. I'm into the vintage scene right now. Printables, the vintage printables, free printables, tea stained and collage papers that I'm use in my backgrounds. My word alphabet stencils, things that I've purchased, things that I've cut, but all about words and alphabet, it's all in here. 
I've had these and they floated around and I spent an awful lot of time looking for them. Now I have one place. So when I cut the next one, I know I can just put it in here and when I'm looking for them, I have them. This one is masks and stencils that my friend Yvonne had cut from me from vinyl. And I've just organized them by type. Now these ones aren't floral, they don't belong in any other theme. So it's kind of a hodgepodge, but I've just kind of sorted them out into here. We've got some words. And I'm hoping that I'm going to use this. I used to have these in these plastic dividers, but in a binder, and I never used it. So I'm hoping that I will utilize that more. Another theme, birds. Hummingbirds, peacock, owls, feathers, bird houses. So in here we have, again, I've got organized again inside that filing system. So we have birds, we have the bird houses on that one. So there's free printables, there's ideas when I'm searching for ideas and composition and inspiration. I print it off and I can put it in here. I've got magazine birds. I've got some of the birds that I've made myself. I've got pictures of hummingbirds and peacocks that I've taken. They're all in here. There's stickers. There's feather die cuts. There's feather stencils that I've cut. It's all in there. So now it's just one pile. I can take it out, pull out just the birdhouse one if that's what I want, and off I go. The next theme, dragonflies. I've got stamped dragonflies that I've used my stamp and I've stamped it on mixed media paper or watercolor paper. Some are cut out, some aren't, but they're ready to go. I've got some printables like what you see here. Some again cut out, some aren't. I've got stencils that I've cut, I've got masks that I've made, I've got gel print die cuts and it's all in there. So if I do dragonflies, and if you watch my channel, you know I love dragonflies. So I'm absolutely going to have a theme of dragonflies. Another theme that I'm absolutely going to have is butterflies. In fact, I have two, two pouches. So this one has printables that has some that I've purchased at the dollar store and magazine pictures. This one has stamped ones, die cuts and templates and black and white patterns because I'm moving into doing it with collage and stuff. So now it's even organized even more. I have three for flowers. I've got flowers one, which is clip art, stencils, patterns, zenspirations, water lily, and printables. Flowers 2 has stickers, embellishment stickers, magazine picks, and calendar picks. And number 3 has templates, stencils, and masks. And a lot of these are ones that I, my good friend Yvonne cut for me. And I've just put them in packaging from stencils all sorted out. So we have the mask and the stencil. So I'm hoping to use these. I love flowers, want to do more with them. And again, this makes it easy to access. Then I have leaves and trees, die cut stencils, fronds. Again, if I've cut the stencil with my silhouette, it's in here according to theme. And if it doesn't fit any particular theme, then I have a general folder for it. So I also, I love my sea theme. I have seaside. I have two of those that are kind of related. Seaside, this has fish, starfish, shells, turtles, seahorse, and lighthouse. This one has templates and stencils. And I have this just as a reminder. Sometimes I put a, just a bit of it in here as a reminder for, oh, I can cut that stencil or I have that die cut somewhere. So when I'm working on a theme, I can just grab that. So we've got free printables. We've got angels, fairies, dancers. All that is in clip art. So I've got some 
adult coloring books that I thought, oh, I could use these in my art. I have two of these. I have not used one. So I'm hoping that I put it in here and I will start utilizing this more once I, it's in this folder. We've got people, I've got masks, stencils, magazine pictures that I can use if I'm doing journaling by fives or an art journal page. I have another tropical one. This could be with the sea one. Palm trees, flamingo, flip-flops, fronds, anchors, and parrots. And we have a gecko in there. So when I'm looking at things for, for a theme and I print off certain things, I want a place to keep them. Sometimes I use it right there and then there. Sometimes weeks go by, months go by before I get around to using it. But now I have a place for it. I have my Julie Nutting dolls, my motivational magnets, my sassy sings, and my angry birds. I've made little 4x4 uh, magnets for craft fairs. I've got some of these cut out. They're half done. They're, they're colorized. So the next time when I need to make more of them, I can just pull this out and everything's in here ready to go. Same thing, I did my coffee and tea and my wine tags. The templates, tags, and the sentiments are in here. So if I'm working on that, I have that project ready to go. And then I've got odds and ends, circles and die cuts. I've got little things that I've cut and little bits that I think would look make really wonderful collage elements. So I have a place for it. So now when I'm looking for to add texture, I'm going to reach for this. So then in the middle section, we have my quote binders, my sentiment packs, now these are all ones that are pretty much whole pages right now. I still have some work to do with my quotes. I have some ideas and I'm going to continue. Then on the far side, over here, we have collage materials. I have started to do a lot more collage. Okay, so in the farther part, I have folders that have textural elements or collage elements that I can use that don't fit the themes. So these are my sheets that I create with modeling paste. So now I can cut them or rip them and I can use them on my page. Here we have a collection of lace, uh, gauze, doilies, now, some of the lace that's in here, I don't have all of the lace. I have that stored. I've got this big, huge cabinet. It's really deep, but it's really hard to access. But if I'm looking at this, I'm going, oh, remember you have that full thing of lace. Maybe I can go and get it. So again, sometimes I put little pieces in here just to trigger the memory so I know it's well worth my while to go through the effort of getting, digging it out. I've got white coffee filters. I've got different sizes. Diff I've got the cone ones that I can use to sop, sop up um, leftover paint. I can use to collage with and stay tuned. There'll be a video where I've used these for something else that's quite amazing. I have some designer tissue paper. Here is that I have stamped in the past. So it is all there, all in one place. So we have that at the ready. Now I've got some colorized coffee filters. And yes, if you were paying attention, you did see some coffee filters, colored ones in the, um, with the gel prints. And I like having them in both places. These I think are gonna end up in there. It's kind of a duplication. I have book paper. I've got diction, dictionary paper. I've got some pages from an altered book that I've ripped out some of them to prepare it to use because you take out some of the signatures, but I've kept the papers. I love this paper so I can stamp with it. I can collage with it. So that's all in one 
place. Regular tissue paper, plain tissue paper, nice and organized and neat. This is just collaged paper. I've got dividers from an old Happy Planner in here and I could rip that out and use bits of that in my collage work now that I'm doing more collage. I've got some magazine or these are from a old um, address book and they have some lovely pictures and I've started to use those again as the initial layer on my page. So that's all in there. The backs of napkins. Don't put them away. You can stamp on them. You can use them to build texture. So here's the folder that has my napkins. This is not all of the napkins yet. I have some work to do. I need to get into that big cabinet, pull them out, and do what I said I'm going to do. But I'm excited about that because then I can quickly pull this out and say, okay, you know what? I want to use... Look at this one. Isn't that gorgeous? And then that will go. Then once I pull off the backs, I'll put them in on the other one. And I've got a plan for the backing, the pull off parts. But the key is now I have a place to put them and I know where it is. So one, I will continue to put it there. And two, I'll be able to find it when I want to use it. Tissue paper. Some of it's colored. This is colored tissue paper. I can't wait to use this one. I have been experimenting with tea stained papers. And there may be a video coming with that and some of the things that I'm going to be doing with this. I have also in here, I've got tea stained coffee filters, tea fake stained tissue paper, the tea bags, so anything tea, and tea stained gauze that I have. Again, this ties in with my vintage theme. I have stickers that I've gel printed on and I've colorized and I've painted. I've used them when I was decorating my planner. I can use them on my art journal pages as well. Pattern paper as well as printed pattern paper. This one has burlap that I can use, that I've made some embellishments from. Music paper and the packing paper that I get in my Amazon boxes, the brown paper that I use to make a faux leather treatment. I also have puzzle pieces that I've bought at the thrift store. Little ones, there's some bigger ones. I even have some die cuts that I can use as embellishments, as a texture tool, or as to create Christmas ornaments. Now on the bottom section, I have my gel prints. They're organized by color as well as size. So we have my orange coral one. So in here I have a, fi a small file folder and when I'm traveling, I can take this and put it in my Pendaflex, which folds up and I can take it to a class. I can take it to a create date. Now in here, I have right now half sheets, partial sheets, organized by color. Then behind that, I have my full gel prints or collage papers. I've got some master boards here that I haven't yet used, but it's all there according to color. Then at the back, I have my colored coffee filters, um, 
kitchen towel, but it's all in one color themed folder. But wait, that's not all. Because I also have, I'm going to pull this out and zoom out. In those A5 pouches, I have the little pieces of gel prints. Now I'm talking little pieces. Now I've kept these. I've, you know, I, I just could not throw these out. So there's just little bits. And I've kept them and they were stored in one big container separated by coffee filters. And quite honestly, I never used them. But they're perfect. They fit perfect in this folder. So I have each again organized by color. I have it in this tray. I can grab it out and I can just flip, pull them out, pull out the color I want, use it if I'm collaging, and then I can put it back in the filing system. I have used this several times since I've set up this way of organizing it. It works wonderfully well. I can bring it out when I have the little bits, open them up, file and whatever little bits in there, and away I go. I want to do more collaging and I just didn't want to give away some of this wonderful yumminess. So you can see these little plastic bins that I have it in. That's from the Dollar Tree and I have two of them there. So that has that one, and as I use these absolutely lovely A5 plastic folders, I can't, I, I ordered even another set because I have just used them and I love the portability of them. And then at the back I've got materials that I use to cut my stencils, book paper, music paper, full sheets, tracing paper, and the like. So that's my stash organizer. I hope you enjoyed this and you found some helpful hints and tips. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment below. Give me an organization tip. Now go get your stash organized.